Hello and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to take you through the step-by-step -step guide on how to use Zoom to conduct your virtual meetings. It's obvious, it's known by everyone that in today's digital age, staying connected has never been more essential and Zoom has emerged as the powerhouse tool for enabling effortless communications and collaborations. Whether you are new to Zoom or looking to sharpen your skills, this comprehensive tutorial is your gateway to becoming a Zoom pro. So pay attention, stay tuned, relax, and follow through to learn about how to set your Zoom calls and manage them efficiently with this simple tutorial. Okay, so to start with, all you need to do is to open your browser and just go ahead and type zoom.us and you've brought into this very platform. Go ahead and just explore to see what and what you can do with Zoom, especially the plannings, uh, the plans and pricing. You can just check and see. Zoom is free, but then you have this much minutes, 40 minutes for free users. And then it can take up to 100 attendees. If you have more than 100 and you want to conduct your meetings to be more than 40 minutes, then I suggest you go for the pro version of business or business plus version. The next thing you need to know is to just go ahead and check out the downloads. So you can come to zoom.us for slash download to take you to the download center, the Zoom download center. This is it. So here you have the, the option to download for the desktop client. Okay, this is desktop version and you have for Microsoft Outlook. It's available also on extensions like for most of the browsers like Chrome browser and Firefox. And it's now also available on mobile. You can check and download it from App Store and Google, Google Play as well. And then you have these Zoom rooms for conference room is also available. You can just go ahead and download and we have controllers for Zoom rooms. If you want to have digital controllers to control your Zoom meetings, you can download from also the App Store and Google Play as well. So it's just go ahead and download for the desktop version. I've downloaded mine. Once you download, you can just go ahead and create an account. It's also free to create an account. You can do that with any of your emails. So once you log in, you're brought into this very platform. This is where you see all your schedules or upcoming meetings. You see them over here. And you can see you can have uh, access to add the Chrome extension or to um, connect this to your Microsoft Outlook account. And then you have, uh, basically, this is your profile. You have the option to change your profile settings and change your timing, time zones, and so on. This is your personal ID and some other basic details that you can find over here. And then these are some meeting uh, settings and controls that you can always refer to. You can always come down to settings whenever you want to before you start any meeting so that you can have a clear understanding of what and what you need to control before you start the meeting. Now we have the general settings, which is just basic feedback to Zoom and how do you want to give feedback to Zoom. But the most important in these settings is the meeting settings where we have them ranged into security, scheduling meetings, a meeting basic, a meeting advanced and email notification and all that. You'll be able to have access to all this. So you should be able to define the security, how the waiting room should be. Do you want to enable waiting room so that users or uh, people who intend to participate in your meetings can they have to wait before they join the meeting directly. So you have the option to enable or disable the waiting room so participants can join. They will have to wait for your approval before they join the meeting. You can enable meeting passcode, but these are just some very basic controls that you can have before starting any meeting. So you can check out these are security issues, personal ID. You can change the passcode if you want. And then you may have to check out how to enable embedded code links if you want, if you're interested on, in that as well. And then you can see a series of things you can change. So just go through and see what and what you can change those things or setups that can favor you during the meetings. And we have the schedule meetings. When you are on schedule, you can enable host video to start before any meeting. So you know who is in the meeting and who is not directly. You understand who comes into the meeting because it will just automatically switch on its camera and participants video also can you can en enable all the participants joining to have their videos on and you can control their audio tile um, the audios they have during the meetings and you can allow them to join before the host you can enable this this is very important because sometimes you may be carried away or you may be busy with some things and you may not be able to have the timing to kickstart the meeting so it's uh, it's important to enable it so participants can join even without you kickstarting or opening the meeting and then we have continuous um, enable continuous meeting chat this can continue even before the meeting 
or after the meeting, participants can chat or can, can communicate through the same platform or through Teams Teams chat. And then we can enable personal ID in cases if you have personal ID, you may not allow and you can allow watermark during the meetings that could be their email addresses or, 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 or they about. You can mute all participants when they join the meeting at a given time. You can decide to meet, mute everybody except those that request for your permission to allow them to talk. This is very important when you have um, sensitive meetings. Maybe you have a number of people, maybe 100, 200, 300. It's very important to enable this so you can mute everyone and everyone can just get access to speak on demand only on permission. Then we have a meeting basics over here. You can have a meeting basics. You can require encryption, meeting charts. You can how you can enable who and who um, should chat during the meeting and you can um, you can enable all this me meeting um, this chat experience people can chat directly or they can chat individually or, or directly to people or within the the meeting they can chat generally and they will be able to have people read from their comments or chats and meeting chats you can have send direct messages uh, meeting chat auto save you can save the chats in some cases you may enable this if you want to save some chats against next time so you can use it as an evidence and then we have you can send files via the chat you can enable people to send files maybe photos images or any kind of document you can send and even specify the sizes of what and what is being sent during the meeting you can enable this as a control also and then you can enable participant to raise their hands in the toolbar you can uh, enable the raising of hands and zoom window screen share during the meeting you can enable that but then you have to give the control to uh, some of the people you have to make someone admin before he should be able to share screen so these are the basic uh, screen sharing option who should share screen and at what point you should share the screen one participant can share at a time but if you like you can enable multiple participants to be able to share their screens at the same time so who can share you can enable host only or co-hosts or you can enable all participants to be able to share so in this case depending on the sensitivity of the meeting i just keep it at host only so whenever someone is, is trying to share his screen, then you have to make that person co-host in the meeting to be able to share. And then you can disable screen sharing for, meeting, uh, for meetings you host. If you want, you can disable. And then you can disable screen sharing for when guests are in the meeting. You can disable that as well. And annotations, you can allow whiteboard classic. You can allow this is a new feature that comes in. You just basically for illustrations, you can just allow it. And then you have remote control. You can enable remote control during the meetings, especially when you are having conference meetings. It's very, very key and it's important. Slide control also and non-verbal feedback. You can enable all these. These are just some very basic controls, especially the emojis. You can allow all emojis or you can select, enable select some selected emojis during the meeting. And then you can allow or remove, allow removed participants to rejoin. This is okay. They can rejoin. Show invite list in the participants panel, and then you can see. So these are very basic a bunch of controls that you can always refer to before you start any meeting. And then we have a meeting uh, advanced. These are advanced. You can report to Zoom uh, breakout rooms. This is uh, quite advanced. If you want to create breakout rooms, maybe during competitions, you want some participants to be at a at a given room. You want another group of participants to be at another room, and you may intend to remote control. Uh, you may intend to have remote support to all of them and you can enable manual captions or automatic captions. Generally, I have to, you can enable the captions and it's available in all of these languages depending. And once someone is speaking in a particular language, it can give you the captions according to the language you've selected here. So you can edit and add your language if you so wish. So you can save the full transcript. You can save the full transcript at the end of any meeting if you want. You can save the options and define the recording settings and so on you can go ahead and set and set all this for in camera control for virtual background you can enable users to insert virtual backgrounds or even videos as may as the case may be um, they some may want to add their own personal or customized background according to their brand or what company you're working with they may have their own specific background that you have to use during the particular meeting and then you have the different views we have a massive view which is very important they can show like people in a theater or in a classroom and it's good for during photo sessions okay and we have focus mode you can enable that also during the the meeting 
and then we have auto answer group chat you can enable that but most of these features are okay to leave at default so you can just check through if you see anyone that you feel like can benefit you or is specific to your meeting you can go ahead and turn it on to request to enable that so for example uh, request permission to unmute so anyone in a meeting has to request for your permission if he wants to unmute and you have to approve and that's a good way to minimize noise making on unnecessary disruptions during the meeting and then we can have save to gallery view save gallery view if you want to enable the gallery view you can enable also from here and so many we have email notifications how do you want to be notified when attendees join the meeting before you or when the, a meeting is cancelled you can enable all this and you'll be notified directly in your email and you have other scheduled privileges over here so this is about the settings the key very basic settings that you must pay attention to and the recording settings also is important you just specify the local recordings who can record and the recording notification is it automatic or you have to enable all that you have to enable all the key local recording options before the start of any meeting you have calendar options do you want to automatically enable or synchronize zoom calendar with your calendar you can do all that and audio conferencing you can enable or audio conferences as well and then we have collaboration devices at this moment we don't have any and then the zoom apps that are available you can enable all of them to have access to them during your meetings because they make life easy while you're conducting the meeting you can have direct access to some of those apps I'll show you how to use some of them or how to have access to some of them. And then we have whiteboard. I just explain how the whiteboard should be. During a sample meeting, I'll show you how you can use the whiteboard. And the content of the whiteboard, you can save it in different formats, starting from PDF to PNG. And you can, you can save it outside. And this is in-meeting whiteboard. It could enable all participants to see. And it can allow participants to use whiteboard anyone in the meeting can use whiteboard you can enable this or disable and then we have the who should share whiteboard host only or participants all participants you, should, you can specify from here who can start sharing when someone else is sharing and only host can so you can control some of those features and we have out of the meeting whiteboard how do you want to access who acts who can access you define it from here and we have whiteboard sharing defaults so who shares and who can share during the sharing of someone these are key controls that you can control for before you start the meeting as an admin then whiteboard retention do you sh should the program delete the whiteboard that you, the illustrations that you've done or it can save it for you against next time or against offline use you can save it of course and then you have the other settings these are very basic things you should just uh, check around and the clips as well so once you um, go through some of this and see which and which of the settings are okay for you and you want to change or you want to add or you want to enable you can just enable or disable and get your settings right before you go on to open your uh, zoom application to start the meeting or to create a meeting once you install the software you can just come over to your uh, launchpad and you can see it over here zoom.us and once you click on it it's going to bring you over to this very platform so all you need is just to log in with your login details and if you are not created an account yet please go ahead and create like i said it's free and just go ahead and log in and be brought into this very platform so here you have the option to join an existing meeting if you have an invitation to join a meeting usually you have a link or you have a code and a password to join so you can just click on this and insert your meeting id or the personal uh, personal link name that was given to you and then you have you can write your own name and then you can just go ahead and join directly so once you click on join it's going to request you to insert a password and once you insert the password you can join the meeting directly so meetings uh, don't have password so you can easily join them even without password next is you can schedule a meeting if you want to schedule a meeting for another day another time maybe you can just go ahead and state the meeting title the topic of the meeting this is tm meeting for example so you can um, specify the attendees by their emails you can specify the date okay so when is it taking place assuming for example it's going to take place tomorrow and then you can give the timing what time is it going to take place you can specify the timing 1 30 and then you can specify until what time to so only 1 45 and then the same date 11th and you can specify the time zone just like the way you have in other places so this is west africa 
And then you can specify the security for people to join. And do you want to generate automatic ID or you want to use your personal meeting ID? This is my personal meeting ID. Okay, and then you can generate either your automatic, you can use automatic ID generation or you can use personal ID, the one that is available for everyone. And then you can come down here to enable waiting room. This is just very basic. You can you may want people to wait in the waiting room before they are, they are allowed in until you admit them. And then you have the video, the audio, and the calendar options just to kickstart. Okay, so you may keep everything at default at this moment. And you can just go ahead and say save. And you've created this meeting. Now the next thing is to create a new meeting. You can create a new meeting from here by just clicking a new meeting. Or you can click on this small drop down to use your personal um, ID. Okay, or you can just start with video. And you can just click just like so to kickstart the new meeting. And be brought into this very platform you will be asked to join with either computer join with computer audio or test speaker and microphone you may want to do all that before you start but let's say we join with computer audio so right now you are in the meeting you have started a meeting so hello welcome to my house at the bottom here you have the option to this is the audio microphone option you can select your mic what, what microphone you want to use you can select from here and what speaker you want to use you can select from here as well the same thing goes for the video you can select uh, from here you can select what kind of uh, device you want to use what camera you want to use and then if you want to choose an avatar i will show you later how to choose an avatar and how to do some other ba very basic settings also the same way goes for if you want to have a blurry background or if you want to choose a virtual background to add to your background you can choose all that so over here you can mute yourself during the meeting and you can press the space bar to unmute and start speaking right now i've just pressed the space bar on my keyboard and that's why i'm able to speak once i release it goes back to mute and you can off the camera if you want to use and it shows only your profile picture as well you can on your camera also at any given point if you so wish and then up, up here you have the security settings so these are security settings you may want to sh share your screen or you want to hide your profile picture you can do all that from here and check out other simple features also now from here you can have the option to check out the video settings and other settings so by just clicking on video settings you can have to ch you can do some very basic checkings of the settings in general these are general settings uh, how do you want the theme to appear this is light or this is the system theme or you want to the dark theme so everything now becomes dark i think some people like it this way but i think i prefer it light or sometimes it's better you go with the system setting so you can choose between all of these features these are very basic you can choose how you want the reactions skin tone you can choose your skin tone whenever you want to give a reaction this skin tone is going to be your default skin tone and then you can choose um, to animate with emojis and some or, uh, other very basic settings here. Then you can check the video settings. This is where you select the camera you want to use. You can see all the cameras you've connected to your system. You can see it here. So you choose the one that you want and you can use original ratio or you can enable the HD depending on the strength of your network. So I usually go for HD, original ratio, and sometimes you may need to mirror yours, yourself if you want to, if you need to, you can always mirror yourself. It's okay to do that. And then you have some touchings, touch up my appearances. If you off that, off the adjustment, you can see right now the color is not so good. But when you say touch up my appearances and you can play around with the um, level of appearance touching. And then you can adjust the low light in case you have low light. Right now I have a light in front of me. But if you have low light, you can adjust all this. So this is the normal one. You can adjust to increase the lighting. So you come out, you pop up a bit and you now become very visible. You can enable this to be manual. This is just going to be automatic and it's going to give you the optimum settings or you can make it, you can make it either automatic or you can make it manual. Then you can increase or decrease the settings and the lighting options accordingly. So I think this is okay. Then you have the, you can always set to always display participants name stop my video when joining or the about you can select and, and enable all this uh, maximum participant displayed per screen you can set it to 25 or 49 participants depending and you can check out other advanced options but this is the most basic for videos uh, for video setting and then you can check the audio settings as well this is speaker like we have said you can use the system speaker and then the microphone you can choose which microphone to use you can use the system microphone 
or any other attached microphone to this, you can select and make it your default mic. And at any given point, you can run a test to hear what you are seeing or to hear what you are seeing from the system as well. You can run a test from here, all, all of all of it. And then you can uh, be able to check out the background noise suppression. You can check on it. You can make it automatic or you can make it low or high, depending. And all of it has impact on the quality of your voice. So you can just choose with, with care. But I think auto does uh, a good job. So you can leave everything at auto. And then the ringtones, if you are being called, how is the ringtone going to be? The volume, the what ringtone you want to use, you can select from here directly and contacts. You can just check this briefly and then share your screen option. You can check on all this as well. These are some very basic ones in addition to the ones that we've shown in the general settings of uh, you as a host joining the meeting. But now you as a participant and sometimes as a host, there are some basic controls you can have um, in your meeting. And this is theme chart. You can set the customize the look of the sidebar and um, the missed calls, what should be shown on your own task, uh, task bar, the contact request, the missed calls and reminders and all that. You can check, check to enable or disable accordingly uh, and the notifications as well. And then you have a range of apps that you can enable to have them within the task bar to, for quick access, such as Kahoot and, and, and all that. You can add more if you're interested to add more. Is how I will show you how to add some of those apps. And then we have the background effects. Sometimes you may need to have virtual backgrounds depending on the kind of meetings you are holding. In my own case, sometimes I have meetings, for example, in Toastmasters, where we may need to add Toastmasters background with logo and everything. So you have to use their own banner background as your own background image. Uh, you can add any background image accordingly. So depending, this is for my club. If I'm having a meeting with my club, I'll just click and enable the background picture of my club. So if you want, you can enable that I have a green screen. Usually when you have a green screen, the effect is better. If you don't have green screen, it's okay. You can also mirror the video if you so wish uh, from the background as well. You can change it. So I think this is okay. So if you want to add your own manually, you can just click on this and you can add a video or you can add an image or you can add a video depending wherever you have it in your system you just navigate select and just add and you just see directly it becomes your background image so it's very easy to add and then if you have video filters you may add different kind of filters from here depending on on you if you have any filter that you're interested you can easily um, bring it in you can see right now i've selected this one or you can add this and you can see um, it may look different on this so this is very easy and it's fun sometimes depending on the kind of meeting you are holding. So it becomes easy for you to connect and communicate with your, your people. And then sometimes you have avatars. Now avatars have been added, so very easy. You can add avatars to your meetings. So you look kind of different um, just to bring in some, some engagement and some very basic touch to your meeting. So avatars are very new. You can see right now I've just selected this one. Then we have the recording option. You may enable the, to record your screen or to record the meeting on its own. And then you can specify the location where you want the recording to be. The default is on this Zoom folder, okay? But if you want to change the location, you are free to na navigate and change the location. And then you can choose um, a location to save the recording after the meeting ends, whether the meeting should, sh um, the recording should be sent to the um, location after the meeting ends or as the meeting is going on, it is being saved. So it all boils down to you to define how you want it. And then you have the profile. Earlier on, I've shown you how you can play around and edit your profile. You can do the same from here. And then we have statistics. We know what is going on as regards overall, the audio statistics, the video statistics, the screen sharing, what is happening. And then we have feedback where you can send in feedback to Zoom and keyboard shortcuts. Here is very important. Maybe you want to enable some key shortcuts for someone joining the meeting or someone trying to access one or two things. You can customize all of these to make them your own, depending. You can just select and then you can write your own, for example, Control S, and it takes in the star screen sharing with Control uh, Command S. So it's all bows down to you. And then we have accessibility where you can define how you want the captioning, sizing, the color, caption color, translation color, how do you want it? And then you can, you can define all that from here. So this is very basic. Assuming we finish with the settings, and we can come back here and we have participants. You can click to see the participants and you can send them message. All of them you can send a message or you can come to more. 
you can rename a participant you can edit pic profile picture or the above from here uh, let me remove this avatar so you can come still back to video settings and then we can go to background effects uh, we can come to avatar turn on and then i'm back so filters and say none also okay so i'm back all right so you can close this and this is for participants you can see all of them you can send them direct message you can mute all of them or you can check out for more ask all to to unmute at the at the, at the same time because you are the admin or mute all at the same time or play uh, join and leave sound or there about you can just check out some of the very basic settings from here as well and then you can still click out to close the participant window and then you have the chat option you can send chat right now you can send to everyone hello so this goes to everyone in the meeting you can see this and if you want you can select a given participant and send to him directly and this is very basic this one also it comes in with different features text editing features you can bold text you can italize text you can strike through and you have you can bullet uh, the points or you can click on this to have more controls and then you can see you can change the uh, make them bigger increase the sizing and add links if you have any link you can just paste over here and confirm so anyone that clicks this is going to take it to that link and you have these three dots as well you can increase indents decrease indents insert quotes and clear style of any text that you've selected and you have over here screen snap okay you can take screenshot of any section okay and send it to your meeting members and then over here you have you can add document you can attach document from all of these places from dropbox from onedrive google drive box and other and even from your computer you can just insert different kind of document or attachments and then you can come to these three dots where you can save a chart outside you can save in pdf in png i've shown you uh, previously that this all these are possible and then you can enable host and co-host or they are about so once you're done you can just send in the message and you can see people can react to it you can see different kind of reactions they can reply to the message and they'll come to these three dots and copy and quote or delete it um, a quote or a, a message directly so this is very basic and then down here you have the option to share your screen like we've explained earlier you have the basic share you can share your whiteboard what you are working on in the whiteboard so let's close the chat um, you can share with sound usually people forget this you can share with sound or you can optimize for video clip if you want and you have the advanced sharing you can share slides as virtual background if you want to be delivering a how-to tutorial but then showing your background as the slides you can do that from here so you just import the slide and you can go ahead and share and then you have you can share uh, computer audio video or any content from a second camera you can share directly from here or you can share files you can import files from all of this platform and share or you have apps you can add apps from here directly and you can just come all the way here to select the kind of app you want to add to at least make your work easy so you can see there are a number of apps that you can make use of so many of them so all you need is just to get an ad like kahoot and all of these uh, applications have been integrated in zoom so you can learn how to use them and just connect them with your with your application and you can play some of those applications directly while the meeting is still going on so let's close on this and then over here you can record recording in progress all right so you've re started recording and you have the option to stop or pause the recording or record without audio you can do that or unmute myself if you want you can unmute yourself okay so i can stop recording stopped okay so recording stopped and this recording that i've done is going to go to that location that we've specified and then over here you have caption you can enable closed caption um, the language you can select over here so let's say the default is english you can say save hello and welcome to my channel you can see very 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 clear and you can close the caption you can see the accuracy is very accurate and fast you can choose the language if you have breakout rooms you're inter interested in creating breakout rooms maybe you have competition and some group of people as opposed to being one room another group of people in another room and another group of people you can define how many breakout rooms you want to create and then you can decide whether to assign people manually or you can ask them to join individually according to their rooms yeah so you can just go ahead and create it's very easy to do that and then you have reactions bunch of reactions so depending if someone does a good job you can clap for him just like so or if someone does a bad job you can give him 
a hands down so you can see different kind of emojis depending on the reactions that you are trying to give so many emo emojis so you just so choose and you can give that kind of emoji accordingly according to the situation and then we have whiteboard whiteboard is very very crucial during your meetings you can use it to deliver illustrations or to show different kind of illustrations now you can see you can create whiteboards from here new whiteboard all you need is just to say um new whiteboard collaborating whiteboard or presenting whiteboard so right now we'll say collaborating so you can see right now we have this um this is the whiteboard uh this presentation if you want to present and then this is a timer this is the laser the jet laser you can use it to put pinpoint ideas or to highlight anything or to select or to pinpoint things just for highlighting it makes life easy also as well during the presentation so you can off that at any given point this is just for illustration and then you can have the draw feature you can use the pen okay pen on of any uh, magnitude you can always click on the pen to check the thickness of the pen you can see you can have larger thickness and you can have different kind of eraser that you can use to adjust areas quickly and if you don't want pen, you want to use a highlighter you can choose highlighter and you can choose the coloration from here and you can use the highlighter very nice the lines are there of different types if you want to use arrows very easy you can use arrows or lines of different types and you can vary the thickness as well so you can add text you can select and just add text and you have this control to bold to utilize to underline to strike through and all that all of these features are available and many more you can see them from here so you can copy paste duplicate things and do all sort of things from here so it's very basic and easy for illustration so you can use it and you have sticky notes also i find this very useful to define what i want to do for example you can see trial one as one point and you can add another sticky note here maybe trial two for example and then you can also equally vary the coloration change the color to any color of your choice or you can lock it for changes or you can add emojis also from from there you can define uh, what kind of emoji you want to add you can give it emojis maybe uh, it be, can be interactive as well so people can share people can collaborate with you during all this and then you can have the option to uh, design a frame uh, which kind of frame do you want to use 16 by 9 or 9 by 16 you can work on a frame if you are interested but let's say we remove a frame these are different kind of frames or custom frames if you want to define on your own then we have different templates if you have a particular template or you want to use from available templates okay so there are different templates that people have created you can easily bring them in okay use these templates so you can just use this for illustration purpose or if you want to edit you can go ahead and customize this to fit your own flow okay this is just a sample flow chart and then you can import upload documents maybe you can just go ahead and upload a document you can you can upload the document and use it here in the whiteboard and over here you have many other features like mind map table kanban and card these are very important features that you can as well use during your illustrations and once you're done with all of this you can close the whiteboard from here and you're now back with the normal meeting next you have the these three dots you can en enable the focus mode if you're interested and you can vary the view options from here you can click on these view options and then you can have the gallery view if you remember we have enabled the gallery view that's possible you have many people in the meeting you can change the view to gallery view this is speaker view where you have only the speaker showing and then you have you can have gallery view where you can have all the participants showing uh, depending on how many you want per page you can have 25 49 or they about you can just be moving across accordingly and then we have a massive view a massive view also is very important for you to showcase your audience you and your audience in classroom format so you can select automatically so you can see yourself and the others by the side maybe this is wall format and you can choose classroom format where you have people up to 25 so you can see this is you and these are the others and then you can showcase it in different different formats different forms depending this is you maybe in an office settings this is you and these are the others so it's all bows down to you when you have 25 you can also equally do the same just select this is you and these are the others at the back and you can take a screenshot this is mostly important during photo taking on in a meeting you can just have different kind of views and go ahead and start so let's just give an example of this and say start and it's going to yeah you can see me now right now i'm delivering this lecture in my office 
Okay, so this is just a view within in Zoom that have been enabled. So you can choose different kind of views from here. This is change immersive view. If you just click, you can change or you can have full screen view. This is full screen. So if you want to change the view back to the normal view, you can still come back to a speaker and you say stop the view and you are now back to speaker view or you can you can check the other views as well from here um follow host video order or um, exit full screen you can do all that from here so it's very easy to play around with some of these key features and you have a successful and fantastic meeting zoom has updated the app and there's a lot of improvements zoom has made life easy if you are interested in subscribing you can go ahead and subscribe and you can end a meeting at any given point. If you are satisfied or you want to end a given meeting, all you need is to come down, see this red button. You can just click on it and it will give you two options. End meeting for all the people or leave the meeting on your own. You can decide to leave or you can decide to end for all because you are the admin. All right, now I've ended for all and you can see that now it's converting the recordings that I've done into a video. So you can see it over here. It's just been converted. The video and the audio recording have already been generated. So it's very, very fantastic. So ladies and gentlemen, this is just a bit about how to use Zoom for your meetings, to conduct meetings, to download and install the applications, and some of the key, very basic control settings that you can have while before you start a meeting and during a meeting. You can play around with it so you can appear professional and deliver your meetings and video conferences professionally. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye.